Welcome back to another episode in the uh, Open Source Contribution Series. Um, I'm continuing to work on uh, finishing a pull request for Alacrity, a terminal emulator written in Rust. Um, and we were working on this pull request, which is uh, adding support for double-click bracket pair selection. And you can see the implementation down here on what it does. Basically, when I click the this bracket twice, then it will select until the closing bracket, and it will properly count the number of open brackets and skip the the next closing bracket so that you get a nice bracket pair selection, as the name implies. Um, now, uh, I was planning on wrapping this up yesterday, um, and I did uh, two episodes on it, uh, but the weather was just too nice not to go outside for a couple of hours, so, um, so I didn't manage to wrap it up, but I hope we can wrap it up in this episode. Um, so yeah, so let's get going. Um, so let's see. So first of all, let's open the editor. And um, I know we were working. I quickly checked the last couple of minutes of the previous episode to see where we left, uh, where we left uh, the state of the of the uh, of the change. And I know we were working on fixing some issues with the message bar implementation of Alacrity. So if we run the, um, if we, let's see, so by disabling this and then running cargo run, and then we um, open a new a Tmux session, and let's see, and we did. And then we do another cargo run from a cargo run from in here, from inside Alacrity. And now, if we to mimic the the issue that we had previously, if we do some selecting, as you can see, we now get this. Uh, this message bar, and basically the issue we have, we still have, is that if you select the message bar, or if you start dragging and your your mouse drags over the message bar, then you release the mouse and you go back. Now with the release mouse, the selection is still attached to the mouse pointer, and that's not what we want. Um, and let's see, similarly, no, and the yeah, so that's that's the main issue that we had. Um, and was there anything else? No, I think that's 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 it. Yeah. So uh, let's let's close this off. And so let's see. Um. Yeah. So the issue must be um, must be somewhere. So here is where we actually do the the message bar checking, and then we return if something. Uh, if something happens, or we return if you if your mouse is over the the message bar. And now, if you look at on message bar click, you can see there is this element state released, uh, which is triggered if you release a mouse over the message bar, and it does it does the actual copy selection, and uh, which then also means that you're no longer tracking your your selection with the mouse cursor. And so, uh, something is going on where this. Um, is triggered, but you're still attached to the mouse cursor. And now, the one of the things that is different, if you look at the uh, the original input, let's see, uh, this is the mouse input. You can see there is this if else statement here, where if your message, if your cursor is above the message bar, then we do this logic, else we execute this logic, and then finally we still set the last button to the current button. And so I'm thinking that because we just return early here, we're not uh, we're not actually doing these last two steps where we set the last button. And this one is something we added where we set the last click timestamp. Um, and I'm thinking something happened there where because we don't set these uh, or update these uh, values, uh, uh, something deeper down in the system doesn't work anymore. Um, so we're going to need to fix that. And first of all, you can see in this implementation, we, we match the button first, then we set the point, and then we do the rest. And so 
we do set the point above here, but I figured we can move the button um, part up here as well. There's still some refactoring we could do here, but for now this is this is fine. Um, then we set the point value. Now we can also move this one up here since we're um, um, since we added this, it makes sense to to start tracking it as soon as possible. And then and actually uh, well we're not using them here, but I guess we can we can even move them a bit higher. So we'll first set these values, then we do the button part, and um, then we have the message at point check. And so let's see. And this is the part where, yeah, so where we're, we still want to execute these last two lines. And so we're going to move this logic up until uh, this into the else statement. And so now we, we execute the on message bar click if required, and we should return, we should remove the else here. And if not, we execute the new logic, which we implemented for the click state handling. Um, and then finally, we update the last button and the last click timestamp. Right. And so it would be nice if we could refactor this message bar, on message bar click into one of the on mouse click functions. Um, but we'll leave that as is for now. We can look at that later. Um, now, one more thing I wanted to change is I would like to have the on mouse click be named on mouse single click, just to create some more clarity that this is the mouse, the, actually the only the single click is done here, then you have the double click and a triple click. So yes, we'll rename, the, rename those. That's fine. Now let's see if this actually uh, works. So we'll do a cargo run. All right, if you hear some background noise, by the way, um, that uh, that's the washing machine that's running, uh, but I figured I wanted to get a recording done anyway. So um, yeah, I'll try to filter it out as, as best as I can. Um, let's see, so we'll open up a Tmux session. How can we, can we just do this? What is it, the patch or something? All right, and so now we have, um, let me make this one down, this one up. And so if we do the selection now, okay. And now well, we can check what either of those, but now if we select and move down, now I release the left mouse button and I drag up again. Yeah, so now the selection properly stopped and now it's working as intended. Right, and we can close it and things are working as expected. Okay, so that's working fine. Um, so yeah, so there's still some things we can improve here, but in the interest of uh, just keeping focus and the interest of time, we'll move on to the next part of things that we still need to fix. Uh, so if you look at the pull request, there was some feedback that we got. Um, and there are a couple more things that we need to do. So this is something that we uh, that we solve now. Uh, so we'll, uh, or at least uh, I hope we solve. So we'll see. Um, then there is this part, which is um, uh, which we're going to refactor for a bit. Um, and right, so the direction enum is something that we added. Uh, based on some feedback that we there's also a side enum which also has left and right 
but it's uh, the side enum just really means like uh, this cell here. There you have a left side and a right cell of this uh, right side of the cell, whereas a direction is, is an indication of you're going to the right or you're going to the left. So I added that, uh, but there is some discussion like, okay, do we really need a direction enum? Uh, there is a, a we could potentially do. We have a bracket pair search. If we go to uh, so here we have a bracket pair search, which has uh, takes a direction and then it goes uh, bracket pair it goes either to the left or to the right. So so basically, when you double click this bracket pair. Um, in this case, it's an opening bracket, and so it knows, well, I need to go to the right and to the bottom to find the closing bracket. Uh, and the reverse is if you click a closing bracket, it goes to the left and up to find the opening bracket. Um, and so that's what that's the that's actually what we want. But what we want to change now is that we um, we get rid of the direction enum and we do it some other way. Uh, one uh, one possible uh, solution would be to use a bracket pair search right left functions. So basically split this one up into two separate functions, then we don't need the direction, but we'll see where uh, if that's a proper solution. Um, and there is some, uh, Christian also gave some feedback on, um, maybe we can um, refactor the call site. So the, the location that actually calls the bracket pair search, which is, um, search, which is here. So here you can actually see we've got the bracket pair function and we're calling bracket pair search with the direction here. Um, and potentially we can refactor this out into uh, calling two separate functions, depending on if you need to go to the left or to the right. Um, yeah, so that's what we're going to do. And then let's see, is there, oh yeah, and then there is this, um, we could change this into a, a match statement, um, which is something I haven't done before. Like I obviously use match statements, but I was looking in, uh, at this uh, comment a while back and I figured, hmm, what, is, what does Christian mean exactly with this? Um, but I think I have an idea on what they mean, but we'll see. And yeah, finally, we need to look into this. We can simplify this, um, but we'll get to that eventually. So, right. So where do we start? So first of all, this match bracket. Um, so we can simplify this a bit. Uh, instead of having these these if conditions with a match statement. And so we could say match C. Now, I'm not sure if this is better or not. Uh, this is something I thought of. Well, maybe this, it makes it, uh, it condenses the code a bit. I think it's still readable, but we'll see. So what we could do is we, we match C and we say C if C equals start car. Uh, then we do skip pairs plus equal one. And we'll do the same C if C equals end car and skip pairs equals zero. Then we can do, um, we can return true and c equals end car then we want to um, skip pairs minus equal one and then finally you need a uh, we need to catch all here so this is well again i'm not sure if this is uh, the way we want to do this but we'll see and we need to uh, return false here so now we condense this a bit into a, yeah, into a more condensed uh, couple of lines. I think they are still quite readable and we can even move this one up here if you want. I'm not sure if it's idiomatic to use a match statement like this, um, but we'll see. Uh, there was, let's see, then the conversion, right? So we can actually move the into here because um, it already takes this, this type of value. So, all right, so that's one part. Then there is this direction part. There was also some feedback on that. And so we are going to remove the direction. First of all, the, enum, the direction enum, we're going to remove that. 
Now, we could split it up into two separate functions, I guess. But let's let's start with just making this into a boolean. Uh, search back, for example. And use that. So if we if search back, then we'll go to the left, because that's searching backward. So we don't need this name anymore. And otherwise, and then also we need to uh, return none if uh, nothing is found. And then otherwise, we'll just do a, a regular while search like this. All right. So that's uh, one thing we can do. Let's see. All right. So we are going to need to change the implementation there. Now, the next thing we can actually do is there was some, we can actually clean this up. So there is a bit of, we'll get to the uh, searching backwards later. But in, in this case, we have an iterator. So we can do a, um, we can do a find map. And we get a cell here. And we can actually do match bracket cell C. Um, C. So we could update this uh, match bracket closure to actually return an option, in which case we can just do find map and call match bracket. Then we'll also need to update this one, which is fine. We can do that. Um, right. So let's see how, how that would work. So we would actually remove this part. And then we would update this match bracket. We it would become an option. Um, this should return a, well, it should return a point do size, same as the as what the uh, the method actually returns. And so here we would then say instead of running returning true, we would return a sum um, iter dot cur. And here we would return a none. And iter.cur is the current location in the iterator that we're in. Uh, so the current cell that we're uh, cell that we're in, or actually the current point that we're that we're at. Um, and so because of that, we can just say find map. And so then we can actually, um, we can just return straight away from this find map and we get the correct value. Um, yeah, so this, this should be working. And uh, let's update the, uh, the implementation. Um, let's see, I declare search. So this is now search back. And it is a bool. there uh, uh, where were we at again we were at um, such no this is the something term mod I believe right all right so then we can actually remove this implementation here and now so this is nice. So we use we use uh, the iterator here, and we uh, take a functional approach into um, just narrowing down this implementation and make it make it easier to to read. Now this search back one is a bit problematic because, um, well, so we have this iterator previous, and 
uh, this is not a standard uh, library implementation. So if we look at, I guess, cell, um, and we search for iterator. Not cell. Uh, grid. So we need to go to grid. Region display. Right. So here it is. So this is um, so this is a bidirectional uh, iterator, uh, which is not something that's in the standard library. It's something that was uh, added to Alacrity. Um, and basically, what it does is it implements a previous uh, function uh, by direction a, a previous method on the on the iterator which allows you to go uh, to the previous columns and then when you get to the first column on a line you will go to the uh, previous line basically um, but um, so yeah so the problem is that you do have uh, what's it called you have a uh, so it's an iterator, double, yeah, a double-ended iterator. So um, there is this concept of double-ended iter double iterator in the, um, in the standard library of Rust. The problem is that it's, um, so basically what it does, an iterator able to yield elements from both ends. And so something that implements double-ended iterator has one extra capability for something that implements iterator, the ability to also take items from the back as well as the front. It is important to note that both back and front work on the same range and do not cross. Iteration is over when they meet in the middle. So the problem is that basically you have you have a at a regular iterator you go from as for example zero one two three four, and then oh here here's an example. So you go from uh, one to six from left to right, and then a double ended you can go from six to one. Uh, but the idea is if I do next. If I'm at, uh, if I start the iteration and I do iter dot next, then I start with one. If I do, uh, or if you can see it here, so iter next returns one, then iter next back returns six because we start at the end. Next back returns five, and then we do iter next next next. We go three two three uh, four, and then the all of the values in the iterator have been uh, returned by the iterator. Um, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, and six. So if you did next, even even though we're at position four with the last next call, we get none because five was already consumed by next back. So that's what I mean with um, you consume from both ends. But if one end has consumed uh, a value already, then consuming it from the other end returns none. So at some point. In this case, at position four, but if if next was only next back was only called once and next was called twice, then we would have ended with none on, uh, after position five. So the difference there is that uh, in Alacrity, we are um, the idea is that you get a point on the grid. So we have uh, rows and uh, and columns. We get a point on the grid, and from there on, you can go backwards or forward. So you extend out from a single point instead of extending inward from two different points and meeting somewhere in the middle. Um, and so so that's um, and so if you implement let's, let's, uh, one of the things that you get with uh, the double ended iterator is that you can uh, let's see. Where is it? I think it's on the iterator. All right, yeah, here it is. So if you implement double ended iterator, you get a ref uh, method that you can use, which reverses the iterator direction. So again, usually iterators iterate from left to right. After using ref, an iterator will instead iterate from right to left. Um, and so, because the because the uh, grid does not implement uh, the double-ended iterator, we cannot reverse the selection. 
And because of that, if we go back to this, at least this is what I believe to be the case, because of that, we can just simply, uh, we can just change this into some, uh, we don't have capabilities like map or find map or anything because we, we would need to reverse the iterator before we could actually use find map. The only f method that we have is previous, which doesn't return an iterator, it just returns the previous value in the grid. And so that's why we have to stick to using this while let some iter previous and then do this match. Now, hopefully, and maybe, there will be some feedback on the pull request which mentions that, oh, we can actually do this and we can actually, we maybe it's even valid to implement double-ended iterator. I think the reason why it's not implemented, although it might that might not be the case, is that the because it's a terminal, there isn't really, I think there isn't really an end in the uh, that you can define in the iterator, because as soon as you add a new line, you would you would you would continue to keep expanding the the range of uh, rows that you can iterate over. Um, at least that's what I think is that's what I think is the case. If if it's not the case, then maybe in a follow up uh, to the to the pull request reviews, we can actually implement double end iterator. Um, but we'll see. So for now, we're going to leave this as is. Uh, we do need to change uh, how we use match bracket here because we also changed it here. Um, so let's see how how do we need to do that. So so we get back an option. Um, and so we could say. Let's think about this. If we get back the, back an option, we can actually return that option right away. Mm. I wonder what, there are a couple of methods on option that we can actually use there, but I'm not quite sure which one is the one we need. So we don't need to map it because you already have the correct value. Um, let's see. So we don't want to unwrap it because we definitely can get none. So in this while loop, we only want to return if we get some. Otherwise, we just want to continue moving on. So that's what we want from our from the method that we call an option. Um, so we've got this OK or. But in our case, we actually want. No, that's all you want. And returns none of the options, none otherwise returns. No. So basically, the, the most straight, straightforward solution would be something like. Um, let um, uh, let point is match bracket cell dot c, and then if point is sum, and then we return point. This is basically what we want now. Um, but yeah, so, but I'm just wondering like, is there something we can use on match bracket that does this for us? Now there is obviously, there's the question mark operator. 
but it returns it returns none if it or yeah it returns none if none is returned right yeah that's basically we want the opposite of the question mark operator i think but we want an early return if um if sum is returned. Uh, let's do let's do one more read through what we have. Uh, and, and otherwise we'll just um because what we have now should work. Um I just wa wanted to see if we can clean this up a bit. So this is not relevant for us. So we can't do any unwrapping or anything. Um because we don't want to do unwrapping because we want to return the option itself. And we couldn't even if we wanted to because um, we can. It's perfectly valid to to get none back. We don't need a conversion, so we don't need map transforms option to result. It's also not what we want. Turns an iterator over possible possibly contained value. Yeah, perhaps we could do something with that. I'm not sure, but uh, return none of the option is none. Otherwise, return of B. No. Turns none of the options none, otherwise cost per bit. Yeah, okay. It's also what we want. We don't need to filter that. So here we got turns option. Yeah, but problem is even if we did something like or where it returns the option if it contains a value, otherwise returns something else that we mentioned. Um this is still not going to work uh, because we actually need to return. Like the return keyword, or or not return anything, um, and we can't use the return keyword in inside um, the closure because it would return from the closure itself. So I feel like yeah, what we have now is fine. Uh, maybe there is something, and I would love to hear from you all if if anyone has an idea. Uh, these are just small things that might that could improve. The same as here with find map and do match bracket. It just reads a lot better than this. These I don't know what is it, uh, nine lines of code that we have here with this if search back then this while and etc. But it's fine. It gets the job done for now, and, and maybe even someone in the pull request will mention a, a better solution. All right, so this uh, cleaned up this um, this bracket pair search a bit. Now we could still split it up into two functions. Then we don't. Uh, or two methods, then we don't need the, um, the search back boolean, and then I guess like then we just have this in the in this in the search um, left and this one in the search right, and we could move this one into a module level function which takes some arguments and returns a value, uh, and we can still uh, uh, and that way we we extracted out all the duplication. We could do that. Uh, we'll see. I think I'm going to leave it as is for now. Um, so then the next step is uh, we need to, let's see. So we've got the, um, was one more feedback on the selection, right? Yeah, so this is now a, a, a Boolean, uh, but there was also some feedback on, on this. Uh, basically what it comes down to is, well, uh, we could simplify this uh, this call side as well that we have here. So what this means is, first of all, we don't we don't need to uh, return direction anymore. So we can remove that, and we can even do a um, a match in here as well. So we could say something like, let's see, potentially, and and. Other than that, we can actually, because we have an iterator here, we can actually map this iterator instead of doing the early return here. 
and we can even combine these all of these uh, blocks into a single uh, iterator loop. So let's see. So we'll start with um, instead of this if else, we'll do another uh, match. So we'll do match um, on the start car. And so we'll get another C and we'll say C if uh, C equals open. Then we'll uh, well, see. So we need to notice, we still need to know the site. And we need to know the the uh, end character that we need to search for. So we'll return a, a tuple. And similarly, the next one is uh, if C is closed. And we'll return the side left. And we'll return open. And finally, uh, we have the else state, else case, which is simply a catch all. And we, so we're, right, so we're returning, let's see. So if we get in here, we could actually return early here. Because we're in the find map, we can actually do a return none here. Now this this changes the logic a little bit because here we say if if the value is none of this of the bracket pair search, um, we actually return the original point. And so basically, what this means is if uh, let's see if I added a I don't know. Can I test this here? I think it will select. Yeah. So now, so if I double click this one, we select until here because this is the match matching pair. If I double click this one, it doesn't select anything because um, because it doesn't have a matching pair uh, because all the other ones belong to other matching pairs. And so what happens here is that um, we still, uh, so you can't really see it here. Let, let's see if I can do it here. So if I have this, um, if I have this selection here, or this this bracket, and if I double click it now, you can see it's still selected. And similarly, if I double click this one, if I double click it, it's still selected. It's just not using the, uh, it's not selecting the closing bracket because, well, there is none. And if we add one, now it selects until the closing brackets. Now, um, in this function or in this method, we actually, this is where we hit this none uh, point because the bracket pair search returns none because it can't uh, it can't find a, uh, a matching bracket pair. So again, in the non in the none situation, and there we set the endpoint to the point, which is basically so basically we're saying the start point of the selection is the point, and the endpoint is also point. So basically, start and end are the same character. But I think that if we just return none here, basically meaning our bracket pair selection doesn't doesn't return anything, we would still we could still rely on the uh, semantic selection implementation to do the selection for us, so that way we don't need um, uh, we don't need to cover that 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 scenario here because it's already covered. So we can return none here. I, I'm pretty confident that we can. We can test this later. Um, so we'll do that for now. Uh, like this one. So we'll return none here. Now, obviously, we need to uh, we need to assign this to something. Um, <clears throat> And so what we get here is we can we can uh, unpack the uh, the tuple right away. So we get a side, and the end character is this one. That's where we do the matching. So this one goes here. And so that tackles this part. Um, now we could we could remove uh, we could just remove this. Uh, and it would return it and we would capture it here. But what I'm thinking is we can actually remove this whole capturing here. And instead, we do a find map here. So we can actually, um, we can move this in here. Let's see. 
uh, because we can do a term bracket pair search with a point. Now this this is a boolean which uh, the search back boolean which we haven't defined yet. And we have a start car and the end car. And we can actually do a uh, something like let's see. So Eventually, you want to get we mm. we do a find map here. We get an open and a close. Because we get it right, because we we get an option here, so we can actually map this option again. We get an option with the point that is we either get none or we get some uh, point u size. And so we um, and the point would be the uh, would be the um, end point in this case. And so because we get that value back, we can actually use, yeah, so we can use this part in here and just map the return value that we get here into the selection. And we still have the endpoint here, we have the point, we have the side, and so all of this can be removed. And then we simply, uh, I probably made a mistake in the number of brackets. I did, didn't I? All right, so this is this, is this map, and then this is that map, right? Still not good enough. Um, uh, actually, and we can we can remove this. Right and search back. So we'll we'll say we'll say let's search back. We'll we'll need to implement this later. Is true like this. And um, we're still missing something somewhere. Uh, this one. Let's see. So we've got the bracket pair. The map, all right, and so we also still need one more. Yeah, all right. So now we've got a we've got a single iterator uh, that we execute here. We check based on the input which uh, direction we need to go. And so actually, we can do that now. So we need to add um, the direction we want to go here, I guess, or actually. What we could do is, I'm not sure if this is what we want, but if the side, if the side that we get back, so we could say if uh, side equals side uh, left, that means we also need to uh, do a backward search, right? And so instead of just return, we could we could easily add a like a search back here and then add the uh, the booleans here so if we go to the right we need, don't need to go back and if we go to the left we need to go back but it just adds more code for something that we can 
infer from the site that we that we get back. Now the original, um, well not complaint, but the original feedback on the on the uh, pull request was we shouldn't misuse sites for direction. But I feel like that's not what we're doing here because we are actually sending in a boolean asking do we need to search back or forward. It just so happens that um, depending on the side of the of the cell, uh, we are, we are we actually know that we want to go left or right. Um, because if we're on the on the left side of the cell, we want to go back, and on the right side of the cell, we want to go uh, forward. So I feel like this 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 makes sense, and this cleans up this uh, this implementation quite a bit. Um, now let's see: is there anything else that we can do? Um, I feel like this covers. everything so we match we increment skip pairs oh yeah one word well the other one the other thing that we i mentioned is we could split this up into two functions or two methods but if we did that then we would have to uh call it twice here and we would have to i mean it's possible but i i just don't think it it makes really that much sense uh we would have to do an if else and call the uh, one or the other method depending on if you need to go forward or backward uh, obviously, then we don't need to send in search back, which is kind of also not great, I guess, but I think it's better than just calling two methods. Um, and then we would also need to split up this this map into a couple of, uh, we would need to assign the value and then do a map on that value. It's possible, I just don't, I'm not sure which one is the better solution. Um, so we can go either way with this. And we'll leave it as is for now. Um, I was thinking there's one more thing we can do here. And again, I'm not sure if it's better, but let's see. Because what we're doing here is we're assigning or increasing or decreasing the skip pairs value. And what we can do, we can actually extract that out of the um, out of the match statement and say skip pairs plus equals, and then we'll just say uh one and this is uh, minus one. This one returns, so it doesn't need to return a, an integer because it already returns from the uh, from the closure. Now this one does need to return something now, um, but we can just return zero here because we're not changing the skip pairs value. And so by doing this, uh, and then we uh, do we? I'm not sure. We do right, and so by doing this, we we clean this up a bit, and now it's I feel like it's pretty readable. Uh, as you can clearly see, it we're either incrementing the character or decrementing it or keeping it same or in some other conditions just returning some value. Now what is mutual borrow? And borrow iter is mutable because it's also borrowed as immutable. Um, where are we borrowing it as immutable? Let's see the exact error that we're getting to make it a bit more clear. See, immutable borrow occurs here. Either enclosure. Immutable borrow occurs here. Immutable borrow later use here. So this is because. Interesting.
I feel like we should be able to do this because we are always returning from this function here. So it's never possible to both hit this one and hit this line. Assuming that's actually the issue. Well, actually it's not. So there are, did you see error two times? There are different errors. Cannot borrow either as mutable because it's also borrowed as immutable. Immutable borrow occurs here. I'm guessing that means inside the closure because we're not borrowing the iterator itself here. Um, first borrow occurs here. Yes, yeah, so that's it uses iter enclosure. That's correct. And then the mutable borrow occurs by the previous call. Which is also correct. And this one, yeah, it's the same because, yeah, so it's not it's not actually related to these two. These two are separate. They are both mutably borrowing the iterator, and we're immutably borrowing it here. Hmm. Okay. So I guess one thing we could do is to actually revert this to do a, f a find and just return a boolean. And then we can do another map here to return actual iterator current. That should work. Um, let's see. I wonder if we could actually solve this um, bar checker issue. In some way. But I guess we're borrowing it mutable here, and while we're doing that, we're also borrowing it immutable here, which is problematic. Yeah, let's just, let's just return a bool here. Let's see what happens. Now, was this Error still there when we could be that I just didn't notice it, but is it still there when I revert the change that I made in this uh, matching? It should, right? Yeah, it still is. All right. So we can keep that change. We just need to go to a bool here. So then, in that case, this becomes uh, false, and uh, this becomes true. And then here we actually, well, we would actually need to go back to the previous implementation. Um, this still returns none. And then we would just say uh, if match bracket cell.c and we do a return um, iter.cur and here we would do a find we can make it into a single find map but then we would have to make it multi-line we can just do it like this now so we get a cell uh, well, actually, whatever we get back here doesn't really, we don't really care about that. All we want is just to return um, iter.cur, something like this. <clears throat> Does this compile? Uh, Do we apparently um, yeah we need an option of point and it occur is an actual point so we need to return some um and this let's see what's uh kind of fun match bracket no brackets bracket no 
All right, let's see. Let's try again. Um, all right, this one needs to be, um, uh, needs to be some as well. And finally, this one returns in pool. What is the other error that we're getting? Option. Um, let's see. So we do a find. We match the brackets. But isn't you know dot cur already a an option? No, it's just a point. Okay, point u size. And that's what we are expecting here as well. So we are returning either none if nothing is found or we return some point u size. So why is this expected struct index point found enum? But a does the map already? Um, because we have an iterator here, right? So if we call map on it, and we get back the function that we, the value that we. Uh, that we map it to. Mm. So this one is working because we return some. This one is not because um. Find then we do a map, right? So we got we got uh, option option instead of just an option point. So we don't need to sum here. And now I am wondering why do don't we need to sum there? Because find already uh, let's do another check. It should be compiling now, but I'm just wondering why. Right, so find returns an option and then we map that option. And so we go from an option uh self item to an option uh Iter.cur. And so now, yeah, so it, it compiles. Um, I feel like <clears throat> this is a good place to wrap it up. I think we let's just cover this. So we yeah, so we covered these uh requests. Uh might be that we uh that we still want to do some changes there. Um yeah, like Christian said, uh, a match statement here, so that's something that we did now. I feel like Indeed, it reads a lot better. I'm not sure if this is actually what they mean, but I, I think so. All right, and so the direction we can actually remove. Um, and here was the suggestion of doing this uh, it or find, which is something that we're doing now. 
or sort of doing now. Um, and we can still, so let's see, where do we, this one can be removed now because we're not using it anymore. Um, let's see, I'm still using it here. Right. And this is now a pool. Bracket pair. All right. Uh, is there any, any other mention of direction? No, there isn't. So we remove that part, no longer needed. This can stay, this, this is this was our case, this can stay. We uh, rewrote the bracket pair to simplify it a bit, uh, make it a single iteration loop. Um, all the tests, oh, well, let's, let's run the tests in the background. See if things are still working. We did the changes to the uh, refactor the how the mouse um, uh, input is handled. So the uh, single, double, triple click. And we'll see if this is what they meant and if it's uh, okay by them. Um, this is still needed, the opposite value. And this is something that we implemented in a previous episode and which we don't need to alter anymore. All right, so that sounds good. Let's see, so the tests are running. And we'll do one more run. Uh, assuming the tests pass, which I do. We'll do one, one more run to see if uh, this is still working. So, and it is. This is still working. All right. So that's, that's about it. Uh, we can Yeah, I think in the interest of time, because we're already uh, recording for now, I'm just going to um, create the final uh, the uh, the commits of the code that we changed. I won't be changing any code anymore, but I'm going to create the commits for them and just push them up and ask for a uh, final round, hopefully final round of feedback. Um, so um, yeah, so let's wrap it up. Um, thank you for watching. Um, I'm depending on if this is uh, accepted, and even if there are some minor things that I need to change, I will just do them off camera. I don't, won't do another episode on Alacrity, uh, or at least not on this podcast. Uh, perhaps given the knowledge that, that I've gained now on this uh, on this project, I might do some other things uh, on, on Alacrity and record that. Uh, but again, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, uh, and I hope you to see you in a future episode. Bye-bye.